Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First MRI. And this is a 14-year-old male with complaints of knee pain for about six months. Finally came in to get an x-rays and they see that the patient does have a well-defined lytic bone lesion in the tibia. So if we get the center, this is the femur, this is the tibia, this is the fibula. And we see this bite out of this, a well-defined uh, lesion. It involves a metaphysis, which is here. This is the growth plate. The growth plate is not fused. It also goes into the epiphysis here. You'll note also there's another lesion here in the right tibia, and this is a, a benign lesion. We call this a non-ossifying fibroma. Very common lesion. It's eccentric on the medial margin, and it um, usually goes away with a skeletal maturation. So we mentioned this as a benign lesion. Don't touch this thing. But now this one is much more worrisome. When we see a big lesion like this, we wonder, is this some sarcoma, some other uh, uh, bone lesion here. So we need to do an MRI to see what it looks like. So on this MRI we see both these lesions. This is the right side. We see this well-defined eccentric bone lesion with sharply defined margins, non-expansile. This is a classic look for just a benign non-ossifying fibroma that are really common and um, don't touch me lesion. And this one is much larger more worrisome. But we do see that it does have sharply defined margins. See the margins here, instead of being foggy and irregular, we see a black line, that means our margins are corticated. On the outer side here, we see that it's pretty clean, there's no big soft tissue components, that's highly favorable, and it leads us to think this may be a benign lesion rather than a malignant lesion, though it's hard to tell for sure. Also, we see these areas of brightness within the lesion, instead of being very homogeneous and uniform, there are areas of brightness, and on this view, this is called a T1 image, and only a few things are bright on T1. One of them is fat, like subcutaneous fat is bright. And another thing is hemorrhage. These are areas of hemorrhage, the fluid pockets. Some of them are gray, and some of them have lots of fluid or blood pro products. So those look bright. And I'm going to put up another view here to see this in the axial plane. Now in these axial images, we see that the margins are indeed sharply defined. The margins are dark, which means they're corticated which goes along with more of a non-aggressive type of lesion, no soft tissue component, and we can see these areas of foggy brightness. So this is very bright here, which corresponds to hemorrhage. You can have high proteinaceous material too that can cause that, but this is probably hemorrhage. We also see a little, um, little fluid fluid level, bright fluid, darker fluid. So it looks like a fluid fluid level, and that leads us to think this may be a benign lesion. And here we go, another lesion, uh, I'm sorry, another sequence. This is the same as the other one, but now we suppress the fat. This is called a T1 image, and all the fat we made dark. So this looks similar to the other one. We see that bright pocket of fluid here that is hemorrhage. We see the margins again, sharply defined. Now we're going to give IV contrast and see that this does have enhancing septations throughout it. And we're going to put up another view here. This is a sagittal view, and again, we see the lesion. We see this fluid fluid level here. And this is a coronal image, another T1 weighted image where we can see those enhancing septations. We see that there's no enhancing soft tissue mass over the top of it. We see that it does contact the growth plate, and it does erode into the epiphysis here. There's the epiphysis, physis, or growth plate, metaphysis. So what is this thing? So when we have a pediatric uh, patient like this, they have a lesion that's expansile with multiple cystic cavities with blood products and layering fluid collections and there's no soft tissue component that touches a growth plate like this. The main thing to think about is an aneurysmal bone cyst. And in the end they're going to need to go in and shell this out and do pathology to make totally sure it's not something else because there are some rare things that can look like this, even malignancy. But again, those will typically have a more a poorly defined zone of transition and they usually have some soft tissue component or going to the muscle. So we're hopeful that this is a benign lesion. Um, and sometimes these things can grow out of other lesions. So over here we have this non-ossifying fibroma. Sometimes non-ossifying fibromas can lead to these. So they may be originally started as this and grew into this aneurysmal bone cyst. There's other things, even malignancy, that can um, lead to an aneurysmal bone cyst, but that's uh, one third of the cases apparently come from an, a, a lesion that's just hidden in here, and two thirds just uh, rise like this spontaneously. So, just an example of what we hope to be a benign 
aneurysmal bone cyst with multiple fluid pockets, which some of them are bright, representing hemorrhage, and air fluid, I'm sorry, fluid fluid levels within and internal enhancing septations in a pediatric patient touching the uh, growth plate here. And that's it. Thank you so much.